Assalamu alaikum. We have been doing different features of cardiac activity in a cyclic manner and we have been showing, seeing the phases of the cardiac cycle. I repeat, atrial systole, isovolumetric contraction, ventricular systole, isovolumetric relaxation and ventricular diastole, the last part of which is atrial systole. So we have done the pressure changes in the left ventricle as a single entity and now what we need to do is pressure changes in the aorta. Pressure changes in the aorta during a cardiac cycle we usually start with the last part of the atrial systole here at the onset of the IVC. At this moment the blood that was pumped into the aorta has most of it has gone into the systemic circulation and the pressure that was 120 millimeter of mercury during ventricular systole and 100 millimeter of mercury at the onset of ventricular diastole has gradually and gradually decreased to 80 millimeter of mercury. Now here at this moment when we are near 80 millimeter of mercury the ventricular pressure rises and the aortic valve opens. This is the point end of isovolumetric contraction phase where the aortic valve opens. At this moment the pressure was 80 millimeter of mercury and now as the blood goes into the aorta the aorta accommodates this blood. The ventricular pressure is still rising because more and more calcium is entering during the plateau phase of the cardiac action potential and because of that the ventricular pressure and ventricular force of contraction is increasing and alongside it the atrial volume of blood is also increasing. When it suddenly enters the aorta when it suddenly enters the aorta, what it does is it increases the aortic pressure from 80 millimeter of mercury to almost 120 millimeter of mercury. Now what happens after this? The cross bridge cycling gradually decreases as the electrical potential of the heart ventricular muscle decreases, cross bridge cycling decreases and this produces a fall in the ventricular pressure. The second reason for the fall in the ventricular pressure is that when the ventricle is forcefully pumping blood into the aorta, or the aorta has accommodated a large amount of blood at this point and now the, for the ventricle it is difficult to push blood into the already filled aorta and because of that the ventricular pressure is used up in filling the rest of the stroke volume into already filled aorta and this reduces the force of contraction of the ventricle and so the pressure of the ventricle. Now you see that the pressure in the ventricle is decreasing and has now reached almost 100 millimeter of mercury at the point of isovolumetric relaxation onset. At this moment, the ventricular pressure is almost 100 mm of mercury and a large amount of blood has entered the aorta and the pressure here at this moment in the aorta is slightly above the ventricular pressure. This closes the semilunar valve. The pressure above a valve is more and when the pressure below the valve is less, what happens is the valve closes because pressure from the above presses upon the valve and the one-way valve closes in response to it. Here the semilunar valve has closed, isovolumetric relaxation has started and this causes a fall in the ventricular pressure because no blood is entering the ventricle, no blood is leaving the ventricle. So the relaxation of the ventricle increase in the volume and no increase in the blood, increase in the volume of the pressure, space is increasing but the blood volume is not increasing. This produces fall in the ventricular pressure and because of this fall there is a suction upon the aortic valves and the blood tries to come back 
but the aortic valves that are closed cause bouncing back of this blood into the aorta aorta mein blood ja chuka hai aapne aortic valve band kar diya hai ab jab ventricle relax karna shuru hota hai to niche wala pressure kam ho raha hai upar aorta mein bahut sara blood bhara hua hai ab us aorta mein se blood suction ki wajah se wapas aane ki koshish karta hai usse valve close milta hai आपने कभी बाउंसर्स बाउंसिंग गेम खेली है वो जो रबड़ इलास्टिक पैड के ऊपर ऊपर से आप छलांग लगाते हैं और इलास्टिक पैड जो है वो आपको बाउंस बैक करता है इनटू द एयर सिमिलरली इस जगह पर जब एटिक वेल्व इज क्लोज एट दिस पॉइंट व्हेन द ब्लड ट्राइज टू कम डाउन इन टू देंट्रिकल एंड फेस इज द ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ एन इलास्टिक एटिक वेल्व द इलास्टिक फाइबर ऑफ द एटिक वेल्व push the blood back into the aorta and this slight rise in the aortic pressure is due to that bouncing back of the blood into the aorta and this is called in cesura i n c i s u r a in cesura i n s u i n c i s u r a in cesura this is the slight rise in the aortic pressure because of bouncing back of the blood from a closed aortic valve which is elastic in nature now as the ventricular diastole continues no blood is coming into the aorta only the blood that was present in the aorta is now flowing ahead as it is flowing ahead the aorta is getting less blood volume in it because the blood is now flowing ahead into the systemic arteries less blood is present in aorta now because the aorta blood in the aorta is going into the systemic arteries and as the blood volume becomes less the blood pressure within the aorta decreases from 100 ml of mercury and by the end of the atrial systole it is 80 ml of mercury and here the cycle starts again these are the aortic pressure changes in millimeter of mercury during the cardiac cycle this is maximum in the ejection phase may go up to 120 in a normal person and minimum up to 80 millimeter of mercury that may be a little lower normally normal range is ki 75 to 1 uh, 75 to 80 millimeter of mercury hai. so this pressure is at the in the diastole it is continuously decreasing and at the end of the diastole the pressure is 80 and at the peak of the systole the pressure is almost 120 mm of mercury now we go on to left atrial pressure the left atrial pressure is the green line this green line as you see at the end of the at the start of the ventricular at the end of the ventricular diastole and the start of the atrial systole the green line is going up because the atria are filled with blood and that filled blood is now pumping forcefully into the ventricle so that pumping force of the atria onto the blood increases the atrial pressure and this atrial pressure is more than the ventricular pressure ventricular pressure ki line green red hai atrial pressure ki line green hai so you see that when the atrial pressure jo ke upar hota hai and the, is more than the ventricular pressure ventricle niche hai atria upar hai gravity se aap dekh le to usse kya hota hai ke upar se jab pressure padta hai to jo av valve hai wo khul jata hai here we talked about opening of the semi lunar valve and closure of the semi lunar valve now at this moment we are talking about opening of the av valve atrial systole produces increased pressure within the atrium and this increases the force above in the atria and the pressure in the ventricle is less av valve opens when the av valves opens the atria are now empty because they have emptied themselves by atrial systole the pressure in the atria is now decreased as the ventricular contraction starts the ventricular contraction increases the pressure in the ventricle and this increased pressure in the ventricle causes bulging of the av valves into the atria av valves jo ke dheele pade hue the ab 
وینٹریکولر سسلی کے ساتھ خالی ایٹریم کی طرف بلج کر جاتے ہیں کیونکہ اس میں وینٹریکل میں پریشر بڑھتا ہے آفٹر یہ اس کو سی کہتے ہیں وینٹریکلر کونٹریکشن کے نام پر اے کہتے ہیں ایٹریل سسلی کے نام پر یہ دوسرا جو سپائک آئی ہے اس کو سی کہتے ہیں وینٹریکلر کونٹریکشن کے نام پر ناو دس سی ویو اس پریزنٹ ہیئر اینڈ اٹھ اس زیرو سے آپ اس کو کیلکولیٹ کریں تو یہ میکسیمم سیون ہے لیکن یہ زیرو سے تھری ٹو فور میلی میٹر مرکری کے درمیان میکسیمم ایٹ میلی میٹر مرکری کے درمیان یہ رینج رہتی ہے اینڈ ناو دس پریشر آفٹر دا وینٹریکل ہے سٹارٹڈ ایمٹنگ پیک آف دا یہ جو آئیسا والیمیٹرک کانٹریکشن اس پر یہ آ گیا تھا سی لیول پر اور اب اس کے بعد یہ کانٹریکٹ کر رہا ہے وینٹریکل اینڈ دس وینٹریکل اس کاؤزنگ It is now emptying into the aorta and so the ventricular volume is decreasing and this is causing a decrease in the pressure in the atria. Now the AV valve is closed at this moment. It was closed here and now the AV valve is closed and during all this period gradually and gradually the pulmonary veins are pouring blood into the atrium and this pressure increases a little more than the وینٹریکلر پریشر آپ دیکھتے ہیں یہاں آ کر لال رنگ اوپر تھا گرین رنگ نیچے تھا اب یہاں آ کر سرخ رنگ کا جو آپ کا وینٹریکلر پریشر کف تھا وہ ذرا سا نیچے ہوا ہے اس وقت فلنس آف دا والیوم فلنس آف بلڈ والیوم انٹو دا ایٹریا ہیز انکریز دا پریشر ان دا ایٹریم اینڈ دس کاؤزز اوپننگ آف دا اے وی ویلز سو کلوئر آف دا اے وی ویلز واز ایٹ دا سٹارٹ آف دا ایسو والیومیٹرک کانٹریکشن اینڈ اوپننگ آف دا اے وی ویلز اکرز ایٹ دا اینڈ آف دا ایسو والیومیٹرک ریلیکسیشن اینڈ ناو ایس دا ویلو اوپنز دا ایٹریا رش دیر بلڈ انٹو دا وینٹریکل دیٹ ایز آل روز ریلیکسنگ اینڈ سو دا ایٹریل پریشر ڈیکریزز بیکاز ناو ایٹ ایز ایمٹنگ اٹ سیلف اینڈ دا وینٹریکلر پریشر is also decreasing because the ventricular walls are relaxing and expanding until the atrial cystly again comes. Now you see the cardiac cycle not only includes pressure changes in the aorta, atrium and the ventricles, it also includes cyclical production of heart sounds. So one of the cyclical event in the heart is the appearance of sounds آڈیبل فرام چیسٹ وال آن دا آن سیٹ آف سسلی اینڈ ڈائسلی یہ بات اب آپ نے بہت اچھی طرح دیکھ لی ہے کہ سسلی اور ڈائسلی کے اندر آپ جب بھی کسی ڈاکٹر کے پاس جاتے ہیں وہ آپ کے چیسٹ پر سٹیتھوسکوپ لگا کر کچھ سننے کی کوشش کرتا ہے جو وہ سننے کی کوشش کرتا ہے وہ ہیں ساؤنڈز آڈیبل فرام چیسٹ وال آن دا آن سیٹ آف سسلی اینڈ ڈائسلی تو دس از دی آن سیٹ آف سسلی ہیئر دا ایٹریل سسلی ہیز فنشڈ The ventricular cystly has started and here and the atrial cystly has finished, the AV valves have closed and this closure causes rebounding of blood towards the AV valves and they vibrate and this vibration produces a sound S1 due to closure of the AV valves and what are the other things that happen in heart sounds and what are the events that happen فیچرز کیا ہوتے ہیں وہ ہم بعد میں ہارٹ ساؤنڈ میں پڑھیں گے جسٹ ٹو سی دیٹ ود ان دا کارڈیک سائیکل دا فرسٹ ہارٹ ساؤنڈ از ہرڈ ایٹ دا آن سیٹ آف دا وینٹریکولر سسلی اینڈ آفٹر دیٹ وین دا وینٹریکل از کانٹریکٹنگ ان دا سسلی اینڈ دین ہیئر دا ایٹریا دا سیمی لیونر ویلو کلوزز اینڈ کلوئر آف دا سیمی لیونر ویلو پروڈیوس ایس ٹو سیکنڈ ہارٹ ساؤنڈ These two heart sounds are normally audible in the, with the stethoscope. Then a third heart sound when the, in the mid diastole or in the early diastole, this S3 is the third heart sound. And this third heart sound is seen when the blood is pouring into the ventricle, which is a half filled. شروع میں سب سے پہلے جو ہی وینٹریکلر کانٹریکشن ختم ہوئی اے وی ویلس کھلے تو بلڈ اندر اندر آنا شروع ہوا جب وہ ہاف فل ہو گیا تو اس وقت جو بلڈ ہاف فلڈ بکٹ میں اگر آپ نلکہ کھولیں تو آواز پروڈیوس ہوتی ہے اسی طرح ہاف فلڈ وینٹریکل کے اندر جب بلڈ رش ان کرتا ہے تو یہ ایس تھری پروڈیوس ہوتی ہے یہ ینگ ایڈرس میں سنی جا سکتی ہے اینڈ دس از دا وینٹریکلر ڈائسلی ایز یو سی وی ہیو کنٹینیوڈ آور ایس تھری ہیئر اینڈ دس از ایس تھری ہیئر اینڈ دین The diastole continues until the atrial cystole comes again. When the atrial cystole comes, the atria contract and pump their blood 
forcefully into the ventricle and this produces another sound and that is called S4. This sound is not heard in a normal individual. It is only recorded on phonogram. Baki jo iske features hain that we shall be doing afterwards. Ab humne karna hai cyclic changes in the coronary blood flow during cardiac cycle. Ye issa hai sisli, ventricular sisli, ventricular contraction aur ye issa hai ventricular relaxation aur diastole. इसमें सबसे पहले आप एओटा को देखें एओटा का प्रेशर वेंटिकुलर सिस्ली के आगाज पर 80 मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्फ्री है इन अ नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल जब हम कॉन्ट्रेक्शन करते हैं वेंट्रिकल की एओटा में ब्लड जाता है आहिस्ता आहिस्ता प्रेशर 120 पर आता है उसके बाद थोड़ा सा काम होता है सेमिलोनर वेल्व क्लोज हो जाते हैं बैक फ्लो जो है वो सेमिलोनर वेल्व के साथ जब ट्रक कराता है तो बाउंस बैक करता है इससे इन पैदा होता है और फिर ये ब्लड तो एटा में से पीछे तो जा नहीं सकता आगे जा रहा है आहिस्ता आहिस्ता इन टू दिस्टेमिक वेसल्स और ये चला गया इसका प्रेशर जब इसमें कंटेंट कम हो गया तो इसका प्रेशर कम हो गया ब्लड निकल गया इसमें से और जितना फिल है उसका प्रेशर है 80 मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्क इसके साथ आप देखें हार्ट को कोई डायरेक्ट सप्लाई नहीं है ब्लड की कि जिना वो डायरेक्टली एटा में से हार्ट को ब्लड जा रहा है वहां से वेसल्स निकलती है जिनका नाम है कोरोनरी ब्लड वेसल्स कोरोनरी ब्लड वेसल्स जब निकलती हैं तो उनमें आप अब देखें कि क्या ब्लड फ्लो होगा और कैसे होगा जब एटा में ब्लड गया यहां पर तो वेल्व खुला है ना अस्सी पर आइसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन पीरियड यहां है आइसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन पीरियड जब आया तो बहुत शदीद कॉन्ट्रेक्शन हुई वेंट्रिकल के अंदर और जितना भी ब्लड था वेंट्रिकल के मसल की वॉल्स के अंदर वो सारा स्क्वीज आउट होकर बाहर निकल गया और इस वक्त आपका ये देखें ब्लड फ्लो इन द कोरोनरी वेसल्स ड्यूरिंग वेंट्रिकुलर सिस्ली इज जीरो ठीक है जीरो हो गया लेकिन इसके बाद क्या हुआ ब्लड एटा में जाना शुरू हुआ जैसे जैसे ब्लड एटा में जाना शुरू हुआ एटा का प्रेशर बढ़ा और जब एटा का प्रेशर बढ़ा तो बिल्कुल एट द कॉर्नर ऑफ बिल्कुल जहां एटा शुरू होते हैं ना सेमिलोनर वेल्व के कस्ट के अंदर वहां पर आपके पास है कोरोनरी वेसल्स तो जब एटा में प्रेशर बढ़ा ब्लड फ्लो उसको मिला और बावजूद इसके के वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर रहा है उसके बावजूद भी ब्लड जो है वो एटिक प्रेशर की वजह से वेंट्रिकल में जाना शुरू हुआ और फिर जब एटिक प्रेशर कम होना शुरू हो गया तो वेंट्रिकल्स में तो ब्लड जो है वो कोरोनरी ब्लड वेसल्स में कम जाना शुरू हुआ क्योंकि प्रेशर से कि प्रेशर की वजह से जा रहा था एटिक प्रेशर की वजह से जा रहा था अब जब एटा में प्रेशर कम हुआ तो ब्लड फ्लो जो है वो कोरोनरी वेसल्स में काम हो गया इट हैज नॉट रीच जीरो जीरो का पाता है आइसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन पर जीरो का पाता है आइसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन पर ये है आपका एमसीक्यू इस एमसीक्यू के मुताबिक कोरोनरी ब्लड फ्लो गोज टू जीरो ड्यूरिंग आपको मुख्तलिफ फेजेज ऑफ द कार्डिक साइकिल लिखी हुई होंगी नीचे और उसमें से जो आपने पॉइंट चूज करना है वो है आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन पीरियड उसके बाद ब्लड फ्लो ड्यूरिंग द कार्डिक सिस्टली बढ़ता है लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा नहीं बढ़ता एटिक प्रेशर की वजह से कॉन्ट्रेक्टिंग वेंट्रिकल्स में भी पुश होता है ब्लड थ्रू द कोरोनरी वेसल्स और उसको ब्लड मिलता है और फिर उसके बाद वो जब एटा में प्रेशर कम होता है थोड़ा सा वेंट्रिकल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर रहा है वेंट्रिकल की कॉन्ट्रेक्शन का प्रेशर ब्लड को ब्लड वेसल में घुसने नहीं देता लेकिन जीरो पे नहीं जाता जरा ऊपर ही रहता है कुछ ना कुछ ब्लड मिल रहा होता है और इसके बाद आपका आ जाता है आइसोवॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन पीरियड जान छूट जाती है वेंट्रिकल के ऊपर जो वेंट्रिकल का प्रेशर था कोरोनरी ब्लड वेसल्स पर जिसने उनको दबा रखा था बुरी तरह कोरोनरी वेसल्स पर से ये प्रेशर जो भी हटता है आपका एटा भरा पड़ा है ब्लड से और कोरोनरी वेसल्स के ऊपर से प्रेशर हट गया है अब यहां होगा एक इजी और रैपिड फ्लो ऑफ द ब्लड इन द कोरोनरी ब्लड वेसल्स 
बहुत अच्छा ब्लड जाएगा ये मिलीमीटर पर मिनट है और हम तो पॉइंट एट सेकेंड में कार्डिक साइकिल मुकम्मल कर लेते हैं लिहाजा ये ना सोचे कि पांच सौ मिलीमीटर इस वक्त जा रहा है और चार सौ इस वक्त जा रहा है नहीं ये रेट ऑफ ब्लड फ्लो है कि इतना ज्यादा ब्लड फ्लो इन मिलीमीटर पर मिनट पहुंचता है सो आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन में मैक्सिमम ब्लड फ्लो रेट आ जाता है मैक्सिमम ब्लड फ्लो रेट कब आता है आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक रिलैक्सेशन जब एकदम प्रेशर हटता है ब्लड वेसल्स के ऊपर से जो वेंट्रिकल्स की क्रॉस विद साइकिलिंग से प्रेशर एग्जर्ट हो रहा था अब ब्लड वेसल्स बिल्कुल इजी हो गई हैं अब बेओटा में प्रेशर ज्यादा है ब्लड वेसल्स में प्रेशर कम है वो खाली पड़ी थी उनमें सक्शन प्रोड्यूस हुई है जिससे वो ब्लड को सक इन करती है एट अ वेरी हाई रेट उसके बाद एटा खुला है एटिक वेल्स खुले हैं वेंट्रिकल रिलैक्स हो रहा है जैसे जैसे एटिक प्रेशर कम होता है डेफिनेटली ब्लड फ्लो उस ओरिजिनल हाईएस्ट रेट पर नहीं रहता देखिए पैरेलल लाइन है ये एटिक प्रेशर की लाइन और ये लेफ्ट कॉर्नरी आर्टरी में ब्लड फ्लो की लाइन बिल्कुल जैसे जैसे एटा में प्रेशर कम होता जाता है ब्लड फ्लो जो है वो कॉर्नरी आर्टरी में बिल्कुल उसके पैरल कम होता है और एक पॉइंट आता है आइसो वॉल्यूमेट्रिक कॉन्ट्रेक्शन शुरू होने से पहले जब ब्लड फ्लो मीडियम है लेकिन ये सारा ब्लड फ्लो अगर ये सारा एरिया आप देखें दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ लार्ज ब्लड फ्लो इन द वेंट्रिकल ये सारा इस ग्राफ के नीचे और दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ लेसर ब्लड फ्लो इन द वेंट्रिकल एंड दिस इज द एरिया वेर देर इज नो ब्लड फ्लो इन द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल में नहीं जाएगा तो वेंट्रिकल में कैसे जाएगा तो आपको अब समझ आए कि सिस्ली के दौरान सब कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है सिवाय कार्डियक ब्लड फ्लो के और डायसली के दौरान और भी बहुत कुछ अच्छा हो रहा है अलोंग विद नाउट वी हैव सीन व्हाट हैपेंस इन द हार्ट एट वॉट टाइम वट है ब्लड कमिंग फ्रॉम वेयर इज द ब्लड गोइंग टू what happens during the isovolumetric contraction ventricular ejection isovolumetric relaxation and ventricular diastole ventricular filling time now we shall see that if the heart has to pump a certain volume from the ventricle into the great vessels great vessels kyun kehti hu ek right heart jo hai wo pulmonary vein mein daalega pulmonary artery mein और लेफ्ट हार्ट जो है वो एटा में डालेगा तो हम दोनों की बात स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम में कहते हैं दोनों को तो व्हाट आर द फैक्टर्स दैट वुड बी रेगुलेटिंग दिस वॉल्यूम ऑफ ब्लड दैट इज पंप्ड आउट ऑफ द हार्ट सो द इंट्रेंसिक प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द हार्ट दैट इज द फ्रैंक स्टार्लिंग लॉ इज रेगुलेटिंग द स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम दिस मीन्स दैट द एंड डायस्टोलिक वॉल्यूम दैट वॉज कलेक्टेड विद इन द वेंट्रिकल एट द after the atrial cisli determines how much is the stretch on the wall of the ventricle if you stretch the wall of the ventricle more it will contract more forcefully so when it will contract more forcefully it will produce a better stroke volume second is nervous stimulation the venous return which was coming to the heart the end diastolic volume definitely determines the stroke volume and if the blood volume is less in the body due to some hemorrhage or diarrhea due to some loss of fluid or blood from the body then the stroke volume is less that we talk about, all about frank starling's law but when the stroke volume is so little that the nerves that the body is telling the brain that we have got problem is regulate our stroke volume to meet our needs then the nervous stimulation helps it and the sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation of the heart determine what would be the stroke volume with sympathetic stimulation i have already told you adrenaline and noradrenaline increase the force of contraction of the heart increase the calcium in the heart this increases the force of contraction cross beat cycling and this increases the stroke volume whereas in the per case of parasympathetic stimulation the vagus nerve decreases the stroke volume it decreases the heart rate mainly and when the heart rate is decreased the stroke volume is increased and that we shall be talking later on humoral humoral means chemical substances 
any chemical substance that can affect the contractility of the heart will affect the stroke volume and we'll talk about in detail later on. Then we go on to temperature. If you increase the temperature to a certain extent, the contractility of the heart increases because calcium goes, more and more calcium goes into the heart and this helps in improving the contraction of the heart. But if you increase the temperature to a greater degree, then of course the stroke volume can decrease. After load, the presence of blood in the aorta is causing pressure in the aorta to increase and then if the aorta is pumping the blood ahead and it is getting emptied easily then the heart will easily pump the blood to the body in blood to, into the aorta but if the blood vessels ahead of aorta are constricted blood is not emptying into those blood vessels then the pressure in the aorta is more and it is difficult for the ventricle to pump the blood into the aorta and if such things happen the state and size of the heart even if they are not healthy that will cause decreased in the stroke volume and now we'll go into the details of this phenomenon i again remind you that I have delivered these lectures previously as well. So you also have to listen to those lectures and I am trying to do it in such a way, the revision, that if any other factor that was to be talked about or if any other point that was important and has not been described previously, then I should describe it now. So I know that during the factors regulating stroke volume, we have talked about the intrinsic property of the heart that was Frank Starling's law in the previous lecture quite effectively and the mechanism of the Frank Starling's law is when you increase the end diastolic volume it increases the initial length of the muscle fiber when the muscle fiber is more stretched initially it leads to more forceful contraction and increases the stroke volume and we have already explained all this phenomena of positive effects on the stroke volume by increase in the venous return. So please be attentive. Do not lose your previous lectures. The revision lectures are meant for improving upon the previous knowledge and not again and again repeating the same things. So the end diastolic volume that has the volume of the blood that is present in the ventricle after the atrial sisley is completed is the depending upon the ventricular distensibility. So if, if the ventricle is good and healthy, it will be distended when you are adding the end diastolic volume into it and this will cause better contraction. Duration of diastole. When you said that in parasympathetic stimulation, mein, we are going to have more stroke volume but decreased heart rate. This means that during parasympathetic stimulation, the heart rate will decrease and the duration of diastole will increase. When the diastole is more, more and more blood will keep on pouring from the blood, from the blood vessels, from the veins into the heart and the end diastolic volume will increase and this will cause Frank Starling's law to improve the stroke volume. Third point is atrial contraction. If the atria are healthy, they are going to contract and put 30% up to 30% of the blood into the of the venous return into the ventricle and that is going to help in the increasing the end diastolic volume. If the atria are not healthy, then end diastolic volume decreases venous return. If you have got more blood in the body, more blood is going to enter the body and enter the ventricles during the diastole and this is going to increase the this is going to increase the end diastolic volume and now we have to talk about venous return. What does venous return depend upon? You have a very good blood volume but you are standing for 6 hours and venous return is jammed in the veins and gravity is down to the bottom. So then your venous return will decrease. So venous return is simply blood volume present in the body but it also depends upon number one, total blood volume. If the total blood volume is good, that is 5.5 liters in one person, then the blood vessels are full of blood. 
the aorta is full of blood the arterioles are full of blood the capillaries are full of blood the veins are full of blood and everything is nice and easy and at that moment their mean systemic filling pressure is 7 mm of mercury and it drives the blood through the blood vessels to the heart in a good manner then this total peripheral resistance if the blood vessels are toneless and lying in the body without any tone then venous return will be difficult to come if the blood vessels are very tightly closed because of some excessive sympathetic discharge then the blood will not pass through the blood vessels so the total peripheral resistance is the resistance offered to the blood flow it should be sufficient enough to keep the blood going on but it should not be more than that so that to hinder the blood flow so venous return depends upon total blood volume total peripheral resistance and it depends upon the pumps sometimes you have to pump the blood upward when that is by the help of the muscles when the muscles in the calf pump the blood upwards it goes towards the heart then when the muscles in the respiratory system they contract they decrease the pressure in the chest and this sucks the blood upwards and both of these things the peripheral muscles popliteal muscles the muscles in the leg are going to push the blood upwards the chest respiratory muscles in the chest are going to pull the blood upwards both the things are going to increase the blood flow to the heart when the the chest the muscles in the chest the respiratory muscles are decreasing the pressure in the chest and this decreases the pressure in the right atrium as well to zero and this increases the blood flow to the heart venous tone that is the sympathetic nerves if the vessels are toneless then they, the blood will keep collecting in the vein and it will not go upwards very close veins and the valves of the veins if the valves are healthy the blood will not go back and will be helped to go upwards but if the very valves are unhealthy valves in the veins are unhealthy they are going to let the blood fall down again due to gravity and this is going to hinder the venous return the gravity is one factor that is opposing the venous return and that is all and now as we have already discussed uh, a little bit the extrinsic control of the force of cardiac contraction is by the nerves when the body tells the brain that the heart should contract more forcefully so that more stroke volume is given to the body then the reflex activity is shown by sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves according to the need of the body so the pumping effectiveness of the heart is controlled by sympathetic and vagus nerve the cardiac output can be increased by more than 100% by sympathetic nerves so if you have a cardiac output of 5 liters per minute and you stimulate it by sympathetic nerves the sympathetic nerves will increase the heart rate and they will also increase the force of contraction and they will take the cardiac output to 10 liters per minute if by any chance the sympathetic output is decreased than the normal one the sympathetic output is decreased than the normal one the cardiac output will decrease by 30% similarly if you stimulate the heart with vagus nerve the cardiac output can be decreased by 30% this means that the sympathetic nerves increase the cardiac output and the parasympathetic nerves decrease the cardiac output and the sympathetic system has got a normal tone a higher tone and a lower tone so if rather than a normal tone you are having a lower tone of the sympathetic nerves the cardiac output can decrease by 30% what is cardiac output i will define cardiac output for you cardiac output is the volume of blood ejected per, by each ventricle per minute 
it was stroke volume it was volume of blood ejected by heart by each ventricle per beat so we are repeating the same information in this graph this is this graph you can see in your uh, guidance in the nervous stimulation of the heart and it is showing you that sympathetic stimulation increases the entry of calcium in the cell and because of that it produces increased force of contraction and increased stroke volume whereas parasympathetic stimulation decreases the stroke volume and cardiac output now talking about the parasympathetic stimulation of the heart the ventricles are not supplied by parasympathetic nerves was we can say that the force of ventricular contraction is not affected by the parasympathetic nerves but some experiments have shown a decrease in the force of contraction and stroke volume by parasympathetic stimulation so ye experimental hai iske upar hum abhi koi discussion nahi kar sakte we have had this discussion in detail during our previous lecture so just continuing with the facts that the factors affecting the stroke volume or the volume of blood ejected by the heart in one beat are the intrinsic factors the nervous factors and then the केमिकल फैक्टर्स इसको क्यूमरल भी कहते हैं हाइपोक्सिया मीन्स डिक्रीज ऑक्सीजन एसिडोसिस मीन डिक्रीज पी एच एंड दीज टू अफेक्ट द स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम बाई एफेक्टिंग द फोर्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रेक्शन इंक्रीज ई सी एफ पोटेशियम लेवल दिस मेक्स द रेस्टिंग मेमरीन पोटेंशियल लेस नेगेटिव इस चीज को सीखने के लिए आपको वापिस अपने नर्व मसल physiology par jana padega when the rmp is less negative meaning if it is minus 70 instead of minus 90 the height of action potential is decreased and because of that force of contraction is flaccid when you decrease the ecf calcium the force of contraction generated by cross bridge cycling is decreased and the heart is flaccid coming to the temperature temporarily when you increase the temperature it increases the entry of calcium into the heart muscle and this increases the force of contraction and so the stroke volume whereas if you continue to increase the temperature prolonged fever ho jaye so there is metabolic exhaustion and this causes decrease atp availability and of course weakness of the contraction so here we are with the afterload if the person is having high blood pressure that is if the arterial pressure that you record is above 160 mm of mercury systolic then the normal sized heart cannot pump normal stroke volume into that blood vessel into the aorta so the heart is increased in size agar continuously aapka bp a 160 se above hai na तो फिर हार्ट जो है वो कंटिन्यूसली एफर्ट करता रहेगा स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम देने की तो उसका साइज बड़ा हो जाएगा तो एक आध बीट में ऐसा नहीं होता सो इफ द आर्टीरियल प्रेशर गोज अब वन सिक्सटी मिलीमीटर ऑफ मर्करी देन द नॉर्मल साइज हार्ट कैन नॉट पम्प नॉर्मल स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम सो द वाइड लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल हाइपरट्रफीज और अगर हाइपरट्रफी बहुत ही ज्यादा हो जाए तो क्या होता है एक्सटेंसिव हाइपरट्रफी इज नॉट एकम्प्लीट विद एन इंक्रीज इन वास्कुलरिटी एक्म्प्लीट का मतलब होता है कि उसके साथ साथ जो ब्लड वेसल ज्यादा होनी चाहिए थी नॉट ए कम्प्लीट अब वो नहीं बढ़ रही हैं ब्लड वेसल्स कैसे इतनी तेजी से बढ़ जाएंगी तो जब ब्लड वेसल्स नहीं बढ़ेंगी तो देर विल बी स्कीमिया स्कीमिया मीन्स लैक लैक ऑफ ब्लड सप्लाई एंड दिस वीकेंस द बायोकार्डियम एंड दिस डिक्रीज द स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम इन द ओरिजिनल लेक्चर that we have discussed previously i have already given you the detail that the normally the stroke volume is 70 mm milliliters whereas if you increase the sympathetic stimulation the end systolic volume increases because the force of contraction increases and you take a stroke volume 200 milliliter and when you increase the venous return 
then the end diastolic volume also increases and systolic volume is at its minimum and the stroke volume is maximally increased to 140 milliliters and we have also discussed this positive feedback phenomena sympathetic activity jab bhi aapki increase hogi ek taraf aapke heart ki जो फोर्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रेक्शन है वो बढ़ेगी दूसरी तरफ आपका वीनस रिटर्न बढ़ेगा वीनस रिटर्न विल इंक्रीज द एंड डायस्टोलिक वॉल्यूम एंड दैट विल कॉज फ्रेंक स्टार्लिंग लॉ to increase the force of contraction this is 1 plus this is 1 plus the two together give you a very good stroke volume that is 140 milliliters per minute As already discussed in the previous lecture, if you have good ventricular distensibility in a healthy heart, if you can distend it happily, then it will take a lot of blood volume for, from the venous return and it will contract upon it to give a good, good stroke volume. If the heart rate is very fast, then the duration of diastole will be shortened and then the stroke volume can decrease because filling of the ventricle is decreased. In case of atrial contraction, if the atria are healthy, they are going to pump a lot of blood, 30% of the venous return into the ventricle and this will stretch the ventricle in a healthy health ventricle to a good extent and that will give you better end diastolic volume. The venous return we have already discussed can increase the end diastolic volume because this is the blood that is coming to the heart. The end systolic volume depends upon strength of myocardial contraction and you know about the intrinsic factor and the sympathetic activity to the heart. The state of the heart, if it is healthy, the strength of contraction will be good. Size of the heart, if it is healthy, this will give you good contraction. We have already discussed in the previous lecture that the venous return depends upon the blood volume. If you have good blood volume, the venous return will be more. If by any chance the blood has been lost in the body or out of the body, then of course there will be less blood in the body and less venous return. Then there is mean systemic filling pressure. This mean systemic filling pressure depends upon the total blood volume and it also depends upon the venous tone vascular tone. So if the blood volume is good and the vascular tone is good, then you have got a good mean systemic filling pressure and that allows the blood to flow through the vessels gradually and slowly towards the heart with a pressure gradient of 7 mm of mercury. Total peripheral resistance we have discussed in, in our, uh, we will be discussing it in our circulation lecture uh, and you have uh, if you have listened to that lecture previously, you might be knowing about it. And if for the new comers, this will be discussed in the circulation lecture number one. So wait for it and just count it. The total peripheral resistance increases the venous return. If it is normal, if it is more, venous return is decreased. If it is less, venous return is again decreased. Pumps, the calf muscles pump the blood forward towards the heart and help to increase the venous return. The respiratory muscle increase the negativity of the chest, taking the right atrial pressure to zero and sucking blood into the chest cavity and the heart. Venous tone, the sympathetic nerves, if they are healthy and supplying the veins normally, that will help in the venous return. And the valves of the veins, if they are healthy, they will not let the blood to go towards gravitational force and will pump the blood forward against gravity to increase the venous return. 